Welcome students and learners. Please get ready to take your design skills to the next level. In this video, we'll be diving into one of Figma's most powerful features, which is Boolean operations. Using these operations, you can create complex shapes and designs by adding, subtracting, and intersecting simple vectors together, which can actually save you tons of, tons of time in the design process, as well as provide you some more flexibility and precision when creating custom shapes. The first thing you're going to need is the lesson templates. So you're going to head on over to figma.com slash community, go to the search menu, search for advanced shapes, Boolean operations. You'll find this lesson by me. And once you're there, you'll see something that looks like this. Everything you need to be successful for this lesson is right here in this template for you. There's a section that's called learn in here. You will well learn about what you're going to be um, experiencing with Boolean operations, a little intro. And the video that's right here is the video you're watching now. There's some examples of things you can expect to be creating, making, or just kind of checking out in this video. And there's also a warm up, which I'm going to kind of just quickly gloss over and just show you that it's there, not actually go over it, because I would like to spend the bulk of the time going over the workspace section which is where we're gonna be doing our learning for Boolean operations. Let's go ahead and dive in. So you will see that I have three different frames that I've added in here. You should have the exact same thing. And it looks very repetitive and that's because it is. However, on each one of these frames, we're going to be interacting with some Boolean operations and then kind of extending that a little bit and changing things up slightly. As you can see, things are a little bit organized within this column here that is in green with those directions, pink, blue, and so on. So let's go ahead and get started. For these two shapes, you're going to union them. To do that, you're going to left click and drag over the two shapes, go to your Boolean operations tab up here and click union. What you'll see is that those two shapes have actually become combined with their outline. Let's check this out down here, left click and drag these and let's click on union again. Sweet. Let's continue on over to this next kind of pink column. And you'll see that we're going to try a different Boolean operation called subtract. Go up to your Boolean operations tab and hit subtract. Let's try that with these next two. Let's left click and drag and let's hit subtract. Okay. From there, you'll see that the top shape is subtracted or the surface area is subtracted from what is on the shape or within the shape behind. Let's left click and we're going to try the operation of intersect. Go here and let's check out intersect. What that does is it takes the intersection or where I guess all of the shapes kind of share intersecting points and it combines it into a different shape where that space is. I think I explained that very poorly, but let's keep going. Left click and let's try intersection again. All right, so you'll see where both of those shapes take up space. It create a shape where those lie. Let's go ahead and try this next one, which is called exclude. And this one's a little trippy, kind of crazy. And let's check it out. So wherever it's actually kind of the opposite of intersect, it took that space where those two shapes kind of shared surface area where it was overlapping and then took that space away, but kept everything else. Let's go ahead and try this one as well. And you're probably predicting now what's going to happen. This little square down here is going to be excluded. Like I was on the playground in fifth grade. Moving on, we're going to go ahead and try some different operations in this slide. So stay tuned on this second frame of shapes. We're going to do the exact same operations, but we're going to tweak the corner radius slightly or actually a lot. Let's do that same operation by left clicking and going on over to union, union those shapes. And now I'm going to go over to my corner radius tab right here or a little box. And let's change that corner radius ever so slightly. And you will see it is very similar to the shape before, but those corners are softened. Go ahead and left click on these. Let's try that same process by going through and unioning and changing the corner radius. <laughs> let's go next to this one right here. Let's click on subtract and let's go ahead and change that corner radius. All right. Looks like a sort of boomerang or something. Let's go ahead and do that to the same one here. Click on subtract and let's change that around. And we got ourselves another boomerang looking shape. That was not intentional. Let's left click and let's go ahead and click on intersect. And you'll notice that if I click on the corner radius here, it changes and just softens those corners of the triangle. Same with this shape over here. When I change that green square and yellow square to then be intersected and I change that corner radius there's some kind of softening of the edges that, that happens. Let's left click over here. 
Let's change that to be excluded again. And let's change that corner radius and see what comes of it. All right, cool. Let's go ahead and do this last one. Let's change that to exclude for our Boolean operation. And let's change the corner radius. I really like how this one turns out. For this last frame of shapes, it might seem repetitive, but we're going to tweak things quite a bit and completely redefine these shapes. But yes, with the same Boolean operations. Let's zoom on in right here. Let's left click and drag over these two shapes. Let's change that to a Boolean operation of union. But now I'm going to reveal a couple things that I've waited to show you until the end. What I can do once I've had these two shapes unioned, I can double click and I can change where those shapes appear. They're going to keep their unity or going to keep their Boolean operation, but I can move them around. I can change where they're located and they will stay within that union conformity. I'm now going to go ahead and double click on this top shape and I can also edit the existing vector path of those individual shapes. Let's click here. Let's add some vector points. You can also change vector points of existing shapes. And if I rotate this, looks like I got myself the start of, I don't know, a speaker or mic megaphone sort of icon. I can then go in if I want to, I can double click. I can change the corner radius by holding down shift and selecting two vector points. And I can make something, I don't even know what that is. Well, now it looks like a puzzle piece. Let's go and just keep that. Made a puzzle piece by accident. All right, you never know what you're gonna get into with me. Let's left click and drag over these two. Let's change this to union. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to double click and let's bring this in here. Hold down our left click and drag. Let's go ahead and double click on the shape again. Let's move it into here. And now let's select that overall shape. Let's change that corner radius, type in 88. And we got ourselves somewhat of like a gamified looking cloud. I can now double click and I can move how those clouds or those two rectangles or what used to be rectangles appear as when they're union together. I'm gonna leave that there and let's move on. On this one, yes, we're gonna do that same operation that seems so redundant now, we're going to subtract. But I'm going to go ahead and double click on my shape and let's go ahead and select this larger polygon, polygon 29, and let's move it down ever so slightly. Looks like we got ourselves like a tent icon or something. I'm gonna move this over here. Let's rotate by holding down shift. I'm going to double click and let's see if we can make somewhat of a heart icon by clicking those two, rounding those corners. And we got ourselves somewhat of a heart icon, not my favorite heart icon, but hey, we made it out of two triangles, pretty cool. We're gonna go ahead and click on these by left clicking and dragging. Let's go to subtract. And let's double click in here. Let's click on this shape. Let's click on the subtraction. And let's go to that rectangle that is kind of hard to see. But if I'm having a really hard time seeing these shapes, there's a pretty cool hack you can do. Not really a hack, it's just a shortcut. Hold down Shift O, and then you can see where all of those shapes are. So if you get a little lost like me as to where your shapes are, where you place them, after you've unioned them, you can go ahead and move things around here. So if I go in and I click on this shape, Let's say I move it around. I can also go in, double click. I can change the vector points of those shapes as well. So if I hold down shift and let's say I change that corner radius, let's click on shift O again. And you'll see that shape has been edited and looks pretty cool. Let's go ahead and just rotate this. I make a lot of things sideways. looks like an entrance to the Colosseum or something. I see the strangest things. Moving on, let's go ahead and left click and drag over these. And let's click intersect. We got ourselves a triangle. I'm not really gonna do too much with this one. You can, again, if you'd like to hold down shift O and move those around, but I'm just gonna kind of leave it as a triangle and leave you up to changing it and making it whatever you'd like. Let's change this one right here to intersect. And let's go ahead and see if we can play around with this one ever so slightly. I'm gonna intersect this right here. I could bring this down. I could even, if I wanted to, change this corner radius right here and kind of like miter the end of that edge. So we got ourselves, looks like, I don't know, like a bird's beak or something like that. Alrighty. Now let's go on to these last series of shapes where we're going to be working with exclusion. Let's left click and drag. Let's go to exclusion. Let's double click in here and change some things around on this vector point. Let's bring this down here. I have no idea what this is. And I wanna show you that you can actually work around and play with fills here. So if I go to linear, that entire shape now has the same fill. 
Let's change this second color to be a pink. And this is looking pretty cool. Again, don't really know what it is, but it's made with two triangles and that's pretty cool. Let's left click and drag over these last two shapes. Let's click on exclusion and let's see kind of how wacky and wild we can go from here. Go ahead and double click. I'm gonna move some things around ever so slightly. Okay, that's looking pretty cool. Don't, again, don't know what it is. Let's go ahead and change this to have a fill that is linear. Let's change that to be, oh, let's go with a green and a blue. And let's change that property to be about right here. Okay, I'm now gonna go ahead and hit Control D. Let's rotate this around and just see what we can come up with. All right, I have no idea what it is. It's just some sort of logo, icon, something. I could even get a little crazier if I wanted to. Hit Control D again, hold down Shift, and things are getting wild. Again, no idea what this is, but it was made with two rectangles and the exclusion property of Boolean operations. Okay, so you're kind of playing around on this frame, messing around. You can copy exactly everything that I'm doing, or if you'd like to kind of go a little bit off script on your own frames, please, this is your Figma file. This is your place to learn, mess around. I think that learning through making mistakes and trying new things is one of the best ways to learn. And guess what? You have an entire blank page here to kind of work on things, try things out, take anything that you saw in the video, recreate it, remake it, make it even better than anything I could ever make. And there's some inspiration for you and some examples. I work with middle school students. I'm a middle school graphic design teacher, and we make a lot of jewelry, a lot of things with laser cutting and 3D printing. So these are some of the shapes my students made during a jewelry design unit where they had to use Boolean operations and shapes to create some custom jewelry. Here's another example of one of my students' works where you see those clouds. I got this inspiration from them where they made a couple of shapes and they added in a Boolean operation of unity for the clouds, changed that corner radius, and that was pretty cool. Here's an example that I was working on for this video where I took a couple of shapes. You see about four spheres and a rectangle. And from there, what I did is I just kind of made them unioned and I changed the fills and I added some strokes on there and I made this cool icon for a weather app or something. So please go ahead and take this as inspiration. Maybe even look up shapes online, check out the community pages on Figma and please treat this like it is your workspace. It is your place to play around, have fun. And I hope you learned something new today. Keep designing and have fun. I said have fun a ton. I mean, I really mean it. Have a lot of fun. All right, bye.